Historically, raw milk was a dietary staple for millions of people. Today, raw milk is prohibited in 21 states. It's not even legal in some places to have whole milk. In fact, people have been arrested. So we need to look at what unfolded between 1875 and 1970 when we found ourselves inundated with the iconic Got Milk campaign. I know I should drink milk because it'll help me grow up big and strong. And today, the increased focus on health and well-being following the COVID-19 pandemic has prompted a resurgence in the consumption of raw milk. So what is raw milk and why has it become such a debated topic? Approximately 6,000 years ago, inhabitants of Eastern Africa started the practice of consuming milk. Specifically, in what is presently known as Kenya and Sudan, individuals depended on milk as a vital means of staying hydrated within the exceptionally harsh and dry environment. Raw milk is what they drank. Raw milk is the natural and unprocessed form of milk that comes straight from the udders of cows, goats, or other mammals. Unlike the pasteurized and homogenized milk found on most grocery store shelves, raw milk has not undergone the heat treatment process known as pasteurization, which kills harmful bacteria and extends shelf life. Instead, raw milk is consumed in its purest form, with all its natural components intact. One of the key characteristics of raw milk is its rich and complex flavor. Many raw milk enthusiasts describe it as having a creamier texture and a more vibrant taste compared to its pasteurized counterpart. The popular belief is that raw milk retains more of its nutritional value, including vitamins, minerals, and enzymes, as it's believed these can be altered or destroyed during pasteurization. So why is raw milk, a completely natural product, illegal in some states? Put simply, risk. Much like how heights aren't dangerous, but rather falling from height is what causes problems. The raw milk itself isn't dangerous at all. However, potentially harmful bacteria can be passed through milk. Cows, who produce most of our milk, can have Campylobacter, Cryptosporidium, E. coli, Listeria, Brucella, and even tuberculosis bacteria present in their milk. These bacteria can be passed on to us if we drink this milk, and with the commercialization of the dairy industry, the disease risk became so much greater. To understand why this risk changed, we need to look at how people got milk in the 1800s compared to now. Before refrigeration was common, people would make daily trips to go get their morning milk. You would wake up and take a walk to your cow shed, or perhaps the neighboring farmer, if you didn't have your own cow, where you would get a fresh bucket of milk. Today, if you are making your morning coffee and you see you have no milk, you hop into your car, race off to the local grocer and grab a carton of milk off the shelf, or a bag of milk if you're Canadian. Anyway, you finish your coffee, pop the milk into the fridge, and carry on with your day not thinking about it anymore. The milk we drink today comes from industrial dairy farms, which means that hundreds of cows live and feed in close proximity to each other, meaning the risk of disease is far greater. We also trade meat and dairy products all over the world. Even the cow feed comes from other countries. All this means that the risk of widespread disease is far greater than the days when everyone got milk from their own cows. This is not to say that commercial dairy farming is a problem that must be stopped, just that with commercialization, there are new risks that must be mitigated. Milk was first pasteurized in the 1860s. Louis Pasteur, a French scientist, developed the pasteurization process. The process involves heating the milk to a specific temperature for a set period of time to kill harmful bacteria and pathogens. This breakthrough in food safety and preservation has since become a standard practice in the dairy industry and has greatly contributed to public health by reducing the risk of milk-borne illnesses. Contrary to recent claims, the pasteurization process does not introduce any detrimental changes to milk. We employ pasteurization for the same reason as cooking chicken. It's solely to eliminate harmful bacteria that could pose a risk to our health. It is crucial for us to fully grasp the severity of these risks. Bovine tuberculosis, which affects cows, can be transmitted to humans through the consumption of raw milk and dairy products derived from raw milk. A case from the 1930s involves Gloria Paris, who contracted bovine tuberculosis from consuming raw milk. The bacteria infected her bones, leading to years of enduring multiple surgeries and hospitalizations. She was not the first or the last person to be infected with harmful bacteria from raw milk. 
So this is why today, 21 states have banned the sale of raw milk, and we are continuously reminded by experts and medical practitioners about the potential health risk of raw milk. All this being said, the real story is whether we should be drinking milk at all. Watch this documentary by Johnny Harris about the lies of the dairy industry. The information on this topic is very extensive and deserves a much longer video. However, if you want, we will leave all our research links in the description below.